This is Nick with LogosByNick.com, and in this video of Inkscape Explained, I'm going to be going over uh, page formatting in Inkscape, how you can set up your page document, your page borders, and whatnot. And um, if you've ever watched my tutorials, you'll notice when I start out, I don't have this border here on the screen, but this is the default file in Inkscape. When you open up Inkscape, you have this page border by default, meaning everything within this page border is what Inkscape will produce if you were to export the page or save the page. Now everything outside of that border will be saved as well if you save the file as an SVG or an EPS or even a PDF. Well actually no, with a PDF everything is contained within that border. So uh, I'm going to explain how all of this works now. So um, to get to this menu in Inkscape we go to File and Document Properties. And we see here in our Document Properties menu uh, we have some options here. Uh, first and foremost, under general, you could set the default uh, units, which by default in Inkscape is usually pixels, but if you're designing something for prints like a business card and you need to work with inches or something, you can you could set the default unit to uh, inches or centimeters or whatever your unit, whatever your preferred unit of measurement is. And even if you don't, uh, you could still select these things manually. Like up here, you see we have pixels, that's by default. Um, you could always go to inches or feet or whatever else. So that's what that's uh, there for. And this thing here, background, what we could do is we could set the background of the canvas. Now, although the canvas is appearing white, it's uh, technically transparent, meaning if you were to export a graphic uh, from this page here, it would have no background color. But if we click on this, we could change the background color. As you can see here, it's transparent because this A column is all the way to the left. And I'm under the HSL tab here, mind you. Uh, what we could do is we could bring this A column all the way to the right, and then we could change the color. Let me bring the S column to the right, and bring the L column over. And you can see we could change the background of the document to be whatever you'd like. But I usually like to just work with it uh, set to transparent. You could set it to black, or even to like a shade of gray, whatever you prefer. So I'm just gonna put that back on white make it transparent, and then close out of that. And over here, you'll see we page size. This is the default that Inkscape opens up with, is uh, 210 by 297 uh, millimeters, I think that is. But you could set this up to like US legal, which is 8.5 by 11 inches, or uh, no, US letter. US legal is 8.5 by 14 inches. And if you scroll through this list, there's a whole bunch of different things you could set this document up as, like a like a uh, like an A5 uh, flyer size or whatnot. Uh, U.S. Executive seven and a half by ten and a half inches. Um, there's a whole host of uh, different uh, ways you could uh, format this, like a U.S. Number ten size envelope. That's another option. But I'm just going to go back up to the top and set that to the default. And again, here orientation. You could set this to portrait, or you could set it to landscape. And down here, we could change the size of the document. Like, let's say we want to create something that's uh, 1,200 by 1,200 pixels. We could just make this 1,200, hit tab to skip down, hit 1,200, hit enter, and we now have a 1,200 by 1,200 size document. And this, these options down here, the border size, the reason why you don't see this page border when I open uh, Inkscape for a tutorial is because I have these boxes unchecked. I like to turn off the show border shadow I like, I like to use that no matter what, because I really don't see the point of having a shadow there. And you can just turn off the page uh, show page border as well. Now, if you're using Inkscape version 91, you're going to have another option here. Uh, I believe it's called uh, anti-aliasing. And you, you're going to want to make sure you have that turned on, because if you turn that off, things just won't look right, especially text. But I'm using version 48, so I don't I don't have that option here. This The, the anti-aliasing is um, on by default. so. I'm going to turn on the page border again, and I'm going to set this up so that the page border is on top of the drawing. And I'm actually going to draw something here just so I can show you. Uh, let me open up my Align to Distribute menu, open up the, uh, the Fill and Stroke menu, and I'm just going to create uh, a square. I'm going to make that red, bring the opacity up, and I'll go to the Select tool, and you can see the page border is on top of the object. So anything we create in Inkscape the, pay, the, uh, the page border is going to be on top of it no matter what. If we turn that off, now we can't really see the page border unless we take the, uh, the opacity and bring that down about in half. Or whatever, whatever less than 100, you'll see the page border. So I'm going to put that back up. I'm going to put, um, I'm going to 
border on top. I'm going to put that back on. And I'm just going to create a random shape here just to show you an example of uh, what I'm going to demonstrate next. I'm just going to create some random shape like this. Uh, maybe I'll create a circle. And maybe a star or a polygon. Something random like this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click and drag over all of that and unify it together. And here we have this random shape. Let's say for whatever reason, this ugly looking shape here is what you're creating and you need to save it. And you want to save this file and send it over to a client. Well, what you could do is you could look at the, the, the width and the height of this object and set the page document up so that it matches the width and the height. Or another quick and easy trick that you could do is with this object selected, you could click on this little button here, this little option that says resize page to content. And we can go ahead and click this button that says resize page to drawing or selection. And you click that and it automatically resizes the page border to whatever size this object is. And I find that really helpful whenever I'm saving logo files that I'm going to send over to a client or something. I'll take the file, I'll set it up in high resolution, you know, 1920 pixels. And then once I'm all done and I have it all set, I'll click on this button right here to resize page uh, to drawing or selection. And then I can save the files and send them over. So that's really useful to have. And up here you can see we have margins. You could put like a... Um, I think this goes in units of pixels, so let's maybe put like a, a 50 pixel margin on there. A 50 pixel margin on here. And a 50 pixel margin all around. Let me try that again. And you see it saved. You, you press the button again and it put a, fi a 50 pixel margin around the entire thing. So uh, let me set those back to zero. And that's how all of that works in here. Uh, if we go to guides, this is pretty much just the setting for the guides, the guide color and the highlight color. Color. The guide is what you get when you come over to this little ruler here on the page, on the left and top edges of the page. You bring the cursor over this little, these little units of measurements up here and you can see this arrow hovering beneath the cursor. If you click and drag that down, you'll get a guide like that. And let me undo that. If you bring the cursor to the right, you'll get a 45 degree angle guide. Same thing, if we come over here to the left, you'll get a 45 degree angle guide but going the other way. And finally, if you go to the left page of the border, you can get a vertical guide going like that. And you can change the color of the guides up here. You can make this like a green. You can make this green if you want. Bring the opacity up. And the highlight color. That's the color that it turns when you, when you hover the cursor over it. See, I hover the cursor over it and it's turning red because that's how we have it set here. But we could change that to like blue. See, we, we hover over it and it turns blue. So that's what these functions do. I don't know um, what exactly they'd be used for. I've never really used these myself, but if, if, in case you ever want to know how to do that, there that is. So um, snap guides while uh, dragging guides. All right, let me show you how that works. Let's say I'm going to create a guide right here. I'm going to create a vertical, uh, a diagonal guide, and it's going to snap automatically whenever I bring it. See, it's, it's snapping to the guide. Now let me undo that. If I uncheck this box, Technically, it shouldn't snap. See, there you go. It doesn't snap now. You could place this wherever you want without having to worry about it getting in the way. So that's what those options do. I'm going to turn that back on. And we'll go to grids. Now, this is interesting because um, this gives you a lot, um, a lot more options to work with. Uh, I, I did a tutorial a while back. Uh, I believe it was called Creating Isometric Graphics in Inkscape, where I showed you how to use these grids. In case you didn't see that tutorial, I'm going to show you now. Uh, we have two different options here, Rectangle Grid and Axonometric Grid. So I'm going to select Rectangle, and I'm going to click New. And you see, we have a grid here. We have all these different uh, squares that we can work with. And if we go to the Bezier pen, it'll snap to the corners, the intersecting areas of each grid line. So like you could draw you could draw a square and be assured that it's symmetrical like that. And let me press one to zoom out and you can see it's 11 pixels by 11 pixels and I'll delete that. And down here what we could do is we could change the grid units to pixels. I'm just gonna leave it as pixels for now. Uh, origin X and Y. Grid spacing. Okay, I'm gonna change this to 20 on the X axis and you can see it made those grids wider and I'll change this to 20 as well. And there we have, we have, we pretty much have bigger 
bigger guidelines to work with. Now, if I change this to 100 and then change this to 100, they get even bigger. So you get the idea here. And if I click this button that says show dots instead of lines, we get dots. It does what it pretty much says. We get dots instead of lines. You can't really see them, but they're there. I could see them on my screen, but uh, when you're watching this on the YouTube website, you're probably not going to be too visible. Let me change this down back to uh, 10. See how that looks. Okay, now we can see more of those dots here. So we have those guides to work with. Let me go to the Bezier pen. Oops, I accidentally changed that to 110. You zoom back out and you see we have all these different dotted guides. So I'm going to turn that off. I'm going to remove that grid. I'm going to get rid of that. And now I'm going to go to uh, Axonometric Grid and click New. And this is pretty much the same thing, only the lines go in 45 degree angle. So this would be good for creating like isometric graphics. And if you're not sure what that is, just do an, a Google image search for isometric graphics design and you'll see lots of cool different, uh, you know, different designs and stuff. And it's what I like about it is it's pretty easy to learn. It's pretty you can pick up on it pretty quick. And with these guides here, Inkscape makes it really easy to create graphics like that. So I think that's pretty cool. And again, I have a tutorial about creating isometric graphics. I think I believe I uh, I showed how to make a laptop and a computer screen and a keyboard and all that stuff. If you wanna, if you're interested in checking that out, so I'll remove that and get rid of that. And I'll go to the Snap tab. Let's see what this does. Snap to objects. Okay, this is when. Let me uh, take this object here and let me um, get rid of that guide. I'll duplicate this and I'll just turn this green. Snap to objects, always snap. If I turn that on, it doesn't really do anything. I'm not really sure. Snap only when closer than. Okay, so uh, snap distance is 20. That means that's the distance away the object has to be before it snaps. But the reason it's not snapping because I don't have it turned on up here. If I turn on the snap to cusp nodes, it'll snap corners together. Like see the corner here, this green corner and that red corner. If I bring that near it, it should snap. See the corners will snap, but only when it's within, I think that's 20 pixels. I'm not sure if that's pixels or inches or what. They don't really specify, but I guess once you're within 20, whatever units that is, it'll snap. See, it's not snapping now because it's not within 20, whatever units, but here we go. Now it's snapping. So. That's what that option is there. Um, I've never really had a, a, a need for that myself, but I just figured I'd go over and explain it. And snapping to grids, again, that works the same way. The, the grids I just showed you, uh, this works the same way. Snap to guides, and again, same thing here. When we create guides, we can control the distance to whether, you know, control the distance to how close the cursor has to be before it snaps. So let me undo that and get rid of that. Let me take, uh, take this and get rid of that. Uh, what else do we have here? Color management. Okay, so this is where uh, you could select certain color profiles to work with. You go through this list here, there's a bunch of different color profiles to work with. And this is, um, to explain what all this is, that's a, an entire different video in and of itself. And to be quite honest, I don't know too much about it myself. I only know like the basics about this, uh, this whole color management thing. But um, this is where you could link like a CMYK profile into Inkscape and work with CMYK um, in theory. I mean, I've tried it myself and it didn't really work all that well. It didn't work well enough for me to actually use it. So if you ever want to link a specific color profile to Inkscape, that's how you go about doing it. And scripting here. Um, I guess you could uh, add external scripts to Inkscape. I'm not too sure about this myself. This seems more um, this seems more having to do with like the coding and the programming behind everything, which I don't know very much about myself. Uh, I just focus on the graphic end of things. So that pretty much covers uh, page formatting in Inkscape. So um, hopefully that gives you some clarification about how you can set up custom size documents and whatnot. So uh, again, like let's say we wanted to create, let's say uh, somebody needs you to create a poster that's Oh, I don't know, like a custom size, like one feet wide and three feet high. And go to feet. We can make the page document. What did I say? One feet wide by three feet high. And let me zoom out. And there we have a document set up that's one by three feet. And that's pretty big. If you zoom in, you can see. Actually, no, it's not that big. But yeah, that's how you could, you know, arrange all of that in Inkscape. And then we can just close out of that. 
And if you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thank you for watching.